Hi all. Today we will go through the concept of reactive forms in Angular. Form is an HTML construct in which the user will be able to enter some data and we will be able to process that data. So in Angular there are two types of forms. One is the template driven form and other is the reactive form. So the template driven form as the name suggests it is mainly driven by the templates or the HTML part of the code. Mainly it will have directives like ng model which will provide the two-way binding and also all the validations and all those kind of things are being handled in the template side itself. Another thing to note is that the template driven forms is in asynchronous nature that is when a user enters some values it will not be synchronously updated in the model and vice versa but in between the change detection will be running. When it comes to reactive form, it is mainly driven by the data model. So whenever we do an update to the data model, it will be synchronously updated to the view and similarly vice versa. Because of the synchronous nature of reactive forms, it is easier to scale and also test these forms in Angular. Also, since these are reactive in nature, we will be able to subscribe to the changes that happen in the value and take the necessary actions. Another important thing to note is that the data model which we bind to the controls, they are not directly mutated by the reactive forms. So these are basically immutable and when a change happens, a new copy or new version of the model is being returned by the reactive forms. So now let's see how we can introduce reactive forms to an Angular project. So here I have created an Angular 13 application and the first thing we need to do in order to introduce reactive form is we need to import the reactive forms module So once we add the reactive forms module within the imports, we can go to our application and here I have created a component called form component within which I have created a form which will have a name field which, which is of type input text and a submit button. So if we go to our application, you can see our form and when we inspect, you can see that when we add the reactive form module itself, automatically a no validate attribute is added to the form. When we add this no validate, it prevents the default validation provided by the browser. So now let's create a form control, which is the basic part or basic component of a reactive form. So in order to create a form control, we can add a property called name and here I am going to create a new form control with the initial value. So I am giving it as empty. Now once we have created the form control, we can give this particular form control in the HTML part and we should give it in the input and here we can give the form control equal to the name of the form control. Now when we go to our application and open the Angular Dev Tools, you will be able to see the property name and here you can see that this is a form control. So the form control has a value key which will contain the corresponding value. So now I am going to type some value. So here you can see that the value gets automatically updated. So this is a very basic form in which there is only a single field. So here I have made use of the form control. So now let's go ahead and create a more complex form and see how we can make use of the form group. So the form which we saw till now had only a single field and it was very simple. Now let's suppose we have a form with three fields and we need to group these fields together into a form group. 
So for that, what we can do is we have something called a form group in which we will be able to create or group together the different form controls. So here within the form group, you can pass an object with the name, which is the form control name and the form control along with the initial value. So this index is similar to what we saw earlier, the control and the initial value. So I am removing the name form control since I am giving it inside here. Similarly, I have added two more controls, one for the age and other is for the email. So now in the submit form, that is the action which happens when we click the submit button. Here I am trying to display the value. So here you can see that the form group also has a key called value which will give the consolidated value of this form. Now go into the HTML, the form group which we created, that is the personal form, we can give it to a directive called form group, which is at the form tag level. And there you can give the name of the form group along with the ng submit, that is the handler for what happens when we submit the form. So when we click the button to submit, the submit form will be called and the personal form value will be displayed. If we go to the individual control, you can see that previously we had a directive called form control that we have replaced with something called a form control name. This is because actually we are giving the name of the control and not the actual form control itself. So here we need to give the form control name and the name of the control which we have given in the form group. So here we have given the name for this particular uh, input we have given the form control name as age and the third one we have given it as email. Now finally we have a submit button where we will be clicking to submit the form and here we are again logging the value of the personal form and using the JSON pipe to format it and the personal form has a key called status which will be showing the status of the form. So it can be either valid, invalid, pending or those different kinds of values. So we will take a look into that later. Now, if we go to our application, when we inspect it, you can see that this is the form group. So the structure of the form group, form control and another thing called the form array, all these are similar. This is because all these classes are basically inherited from a base class called abstract control. So this will have some common properties which will be shared across all these three classes. So now if you go to the form group, you can see there is a key called controls in which we will be able to see the individual controls again having a similar structure and the value and the status. So we have all the three fields and here in our form also there is a key called value which we are display going to display here. So currently you can see that when we display it, it is having the value empty. Now when the user types something, the corresponding value will get updated in that form control. And the value we can get it as a single object from the personal form dot value. Now let's see how we can change the value from the program side. So here we are changing the value through user interaction. Now let's see how we can change it programmatically. In order to update the value of a form control programmatically, there are two methods. One is the set value method and other is the patch value method. So the set value method, as we saw previously, it can be applied to either a form as a whole or to individual form controls. So in our previous case, when we used a simple form control called name, we could have directly updated that using the name.set value and by passing the new value. Since it was a string, we could pass it directly as a string. But in our case, since the personal form is actually a form group, that is a complex object, 
we should pass the new value as a complex object and one thing is that the set value requires the new value for all the keys which we have defined within the form group that is we have defined three form controls we need to give the new value for each of those form controls the new value or the current value in case you need to update only one you need to merge with the old value for the other two form controls the other method which is available is the patch value so the patch value is such a way that you need to pass only the property and the new value which needs to be modified so here in this case i need to update only the name with the new value patched value so i need not pass the other form control values in the patch value method here you can note that we are not directly modifying the form control values but we are calling the set value or patch value methods and then through that we are modifying this so this is the place where immutability comes into picture these methods will not directly modify the bound object but it will create a new copy and then update the view value now if we go to our application here in the html we have added two buttons one is to call the set value and other is to call the patch value so here when we click the set value you can see that the set value method is being called and the new value is getting bound to our form similarly if we click the patch value you can see that only the name that particular field alone got updated and the remaining fields remain the same so now let's see what happens in case we did not pass any pass the full object to a set value so now when we try to set the value an error occurs it will say that a value should be supplied for the form control with the name email so hence the set value needs to have the full structure of our form group now let's take a look at a bit more complex form so here actually we are trying out the nested form group so the form group need not be at the top level of a form it can come within a form group as well so here i have added a new form group called address so the address as you know it will be a combination of certain fields so it can be the street city state zip all this co combines to form the address so within our personal form which is a form group i have added another form group named address and within that we have created individual form controls for the street city state and zip now if we go to the html part here for the address part what we have given is previously when you see we had made use of the form group that's a directive and we are passing a variable name so here in case of our address we are making use of the another directive called form group name to which we will be passing a string that is the actual name of that form group so this should be exactly same as what we gave here in the ts and within that form group we will be able to make use of the different form controls so here we have the form control name street city state and zip so all these will be correspondingly bound to the controls now in our ts to set the value we need to pass the entire address object as well so here you can see that this is ideally an object within an object so the new object's key is address and within that we have the different keys street city state and zip so we need to provide values for each of these so if you don't provide it will result in an error similarly while making use of the patched value in case i need to update only the city alone i need to provide the key of the parent as well so within the patch value you need to give the address key and within that you need to give the city key which i need to update so let's go to our application 
when I press the patch value, you can see that only the name and the city got updated. And when I click the set value, all the fields get updated. And the new value of the form you can see here in the form value. So the forms which we saw till now, all these had a specific structure. So we knew that the fields will have this particular name and we have defined the structure for that form. So in some cases, there can be fields in a form which can be added dynamically. We may not know the name of that field or how many fields there can be in that form. So in order to handle such scenarios, we have a particular class called form array which we can make use in this scenario. So here in our form, let us suppose we have an entry called hobbies and we don't know how many hobbies this particular user has. So he can keep on adding his hobbies by making use of the add hobby button. So how we can handle this? So in our main form group, we need to add a new key called hobbies, which will be a new form array. So a form array is quite similar to the form group, but instead of an object, it will be a list of controls. Once we define the form array in the set value, we will be able to directly set the values. So here I am setting the corresponding value, like whatever value is present currently, the same value I am setting it back. And if we go to our HTML, the syntax is quite similar. We added a new div where we give a directive called form array name. And as part of the form array name, we will be giving the name which we gave here in our TS. So we have given the name hobbies. And within that, when we press the add hobby, we will be calling the method add hobby. And here in the add hobby, what we are doing is we are dynamically creating new form controls and pushing it to the form array. So this is the main use case of form array when we need to create form controls dynamically. Now, once we create a new form control, here we are making use of a getter. So getter is a utility which can be used for shortening this syntax. Like in case we need to access this within our HTML, it can be quite complex. So in order to reduce the complexity, we can make use of getters. So this getter is basically getting the form array from our personal form. So the form group has a key called get, which can be used to get a particular control by passing the name of the control as the parameter. So here we are passing the name hobbies to the personal form and we are getting the form array. Now this particular getter we can make use throughout our program here in the TS as well as in our HTML. Inside the getter we have a key called controls. As I mentioned earlier the controls is an array. So we can loop through these controls by making use of the ng4 and inside the ng4 we are defining an input box where the form control name so previously the form control name was a string here since we don't know the name of the control we are making use of the index as the name so for the first one it will be one two so it goes on similar now once we have bound this let us run our application. So here you can see that initially in the form value, the hobbies that is form array is empty. It does not have any form control. Now, when we press on the add hobby, you can see that a label came along with an input text box. And here the form control corresponding value is empty. Now let's add one more. Now, if we go ahead and inspect our angular, Inside the controls, there is a control named hobby, which is a form array. And inside the form array, we have a controls, which is an array. So inside this, you will be able to see the values. 
currently it is empty now suppose I add some values you can see the value 23 once you enter the values you can see the values getting updated within our form array so when we press on the set value we can set the existing value back to the form array and in case of patch value here I am not updating the form array so in the current example which we are seeing we had created the form all the controls within the form and the dynamic parts by manually calling the new keyword and creating the instances of the form group form control and the form array so similarly there is a utility method or a service that is available which can simplify this creation process for us so that is the form builder so form builder is a service so we need to inject it once we inject this service we will be able to make use of that to create our form so what I am doing is I am going to remove the form and I am just saying it it is a form group which I will be creating within the ng on init by making use of the form builder so the form builder basically consists of three methods so one is the group other is the control and third one is the array so here the initial case we need to create a form group so we call the form builder dot group method and pass the structure of our form so here we pass the name age email with the initial value as empty and the address since it is again a form group we need to call the fb.group once more and to that we will be passing the address related fields similarly we create the form array by making use of the fb.array method and passing an empty array as the input so once we do this we will be getting a structure exactly similar to what we previously had so this is a utility method which can reduce the syntax for creating the form now when we run our application again it will be working as previously previously I had told that we will be able to react to the value changes which we receive from the reactive forms so let's see how we can do that all the controls the form group and the form array it has a key called value changes to which we will be able to subscribe so this is a basically an observable and this observable will emit data whenever the value gets changed either from the user side or from the programmatic side so now I have subscribed to that value changes and I am logging a console so now let's see when this console get logged so first I am going to enter a name now if you go to the console you can see that each time a key is inputted the particular value gets emitted in this observable so initially the name was w the next key press it was wr so this is from the user input side similarly in case we try to update the value programmatically you can see that again a value change has been emitted and this time the entire model has been updated and emitted in a single value so till now we were handling mainly the value part of our controls an equally important part of the control is the status so a control can have nine statuses so these are valid or invalid so these are mutually exclusive either it can be valid or it can be invalid another one is the disabled or enabled the next one is pristine or dirty and touched and untouched so these four pairs these are mutually exclusive and a control can have only a single value at a particular time and we have another status that is called the pending 
So this is a special case which will happen for controls which make use of async validators. Now I have created a component to which I am passing a control as an input. So this can either be a form control, a form array or a form group. So once I get that control, I am checking the flags that valid in case it is valid, in case it is invalid, pending, disabled, enabled, pristine, dirty, touched or untouched. So I am creating a color badge for that. And this particular component I have added here for each of our form control and the entire form as well. So for the form control, I have created like this, the app status component, which accepts the input control. And here I am making use of a method called get control. So inside the get control, I am basically getting a particular control from the personal form by uh, passing the name. So here, the first case it is name. Similarly, the next it will be age and it goes on like that. And here in case of the form group address, again I am passing the same thing. So it can either be a form group, form array or a form control. But when we need to fetch something from within a form group that is nested within the main form group, we need to pass this particular syntax that is the form group name dot the form control name. This is one format, otherwise you can pass it as an array of strings as well. So here again I am using the same dot format and in case of the form array I can directly assign the form control because we are looping it through the hobbies.controls. I am directly passing the hobby and in order to skip the type check, I am using the dollar any. And in case of our main form, you can pass the main form group itself as a input to our control. So once I have done this, we will be able to see the statuses of our, each of our controls. So this is the status of our control. This is the status of the form group address. And in case I add a hobby, you can see the status of our form array. That is the individual control within the form array. And here we can see the status of our entire form. As of now, since we didn't add any validations, all the controls will be valid. And since we have not disabled anything, all these are in enabled status and we have not modified any value within these controls. So it is pristine and we have not even touched it. So what is the meaning of this touched and untouched? So now I am clicking on the name control and from here I am just tabbing out. That is I triggered a blur event. So what happens is that whenever a blur event is initiated from a control, the status of that control moves from untouched to touched. Similarly, when we type anything or give an input, you can see that the pristine status changed to dirty. Now, even if we revert back to the normal value or the previous value, still that particular control will be dirty. Another thing to note is that Whenever we make any change to this particular control, immediately the parent, that is the form group in which this control resides, the status of that parent also got changed. So this is one important property to note that whenever the status of a descendant changes, immediately that status change is propagated back to the parent. So similarly, if I just tab out from the state, you can see that the state control is changed as well as the form group address also got touched. Similarly, when I type something, you can see that the control as well as the address that is a form group also became dirty. Now let's explore the statuses enabled and disabled. So for that, I have created a button here that is calling a method change mode on click 
and what I am doing is that I am getting the address control and I am checking the disabled property in case it is disabled I am trying to call the enable method on the particular con control or the form group and in case it is enabled I am calling the disabled so these two methods can be used to enable or disable a control or form group or form array. Now let's go to the application and you can see that currently the address this this, this particular form group as well as all the controls un under it are enabled. So when I click on enable disable you can see that the form group as well as all the controls within that form group they have been disabled. So this is the property of the enable disable method that is when we try to disable or enable a particular form group or form array all the descendants will be having the same property. So similarly when I try to enable the form group you can see that all the form controls within that particular form group has been enabled. Now let's see how we can reset a particular form back to its initial values. So here I have added a button called reset and within that I have bound the method reset form. So if you go to the reset form you can see that there is a method called reset which we will be able to call from within the form group. So this is present for all the controls that is the form control, form group as well as the form array. So let's go to our application and here I am setting the value. So the field has been set for each of these values and in case I change you can see that the status also get changed. But when we press the reset button you can see that all the controls have been restored to that initial value which we defined within our program. That is whatever value we had given here during the initialization process it has been reset to that value as well as the status have been reset to the default value. So when we reset our form you would have seen that the status pristine and untouched everything was reset back to its normal value like here it is dirty but when I press reset it is automatically changed back to the initial value. So let's see how we can do the same thing like modify the pristine dirty and the touched untouched by making use of methods. So there are some inbuilt methods which are available. So one of them is the mark all as touched. So let's do one thing. We will get the address form group control and then call this mark all as touched. Let's see what happens. So this code I have added within the set value. Now when I press set value, previously what happened, the status won't get changed, only the values were updating. Now when I press set value, you can see that the address form group as well as all the controls within that particular form group, they got touched. So that is the use of this particular mark all as touched. Now let's see another utility method that is the mark as touched and mark as untouched. So here what I am doing is that initially I am getting the address city that is the city control within this address form group. So previously I had told either you can use the dot notation that is address dot city or you can use the array notation. So this is the array notation. We can pass the address and city as entries to this array and here initially I am marking the city control as touched and after two seconds I am making it as untouched. So when I click on set value you can see that the city as well as the address it changed status to touched and after two seconds it revert back to the untouched value. Similarly we have two other utility methods that is one for setting the field as dirty and other is reverting it back to the pristine form. So again I am making use of the city control and 
calling these two methods. First, I'll make it as 30 and then after two seconds, I will revert it to the pristine form. So when I click here, you can see that the form became dirty and after two seconds, it reverted back to the pristine. So one thing to note is that when I click the set value, the dirty flag is set for all the parents, like starting from the city, the address form group to the main form as well. So there is a way in which you can skip this that is only to change the status of that particular control so in that case what we can do is we can pass a flag that's an option called only self and make it as true while calling the mark as dirty so now what will happen is it will mark that particular control alone that is the city control alone and it won't affect the parents now Let's click on set value. You can see that only that particular controls status changed to dirty. The, all the other are still remaining as pristine. So this is the use of the only self flag. Now in the submit button, while submitting the form, I have decided to mark all the fields as pristine as well as untouched. So we can directly make use of the method within the main form that is the personal form to mark all the fields as pristine and untouched so here i have and i am entering some data so all these things have been set as either dirty or touched now when i submit you can see that the status of all the controls within this particular form has been reverted back to the pristine and untouched. Now let's move to another important factor that is the validity of a form. So validations play a major role in case of forms. Here I have added a disabled property to our button that is a submit button. In case the personal form dot invalid flag is true that is any field within our form is invalid. The invalid status of our personal form that is the form will be set in case of that I, I am disabling the status of our submit now let's see how we can add the validations so initially since we have not added any validations even if we don't enter something in these fields still our button will be enabled since the status of our form is valid now let's add some validations and see whether it works. So when we define a control, here we are only giving the initial value. So there is an expanded form for this. We can give an array and the first entry of that array will be the default value. After that, the second will be the synchronous validators. Let's add the validators. So there is, there are some inbuilt validators which are available with, within Angular. So required is one such validator. So this particular class, the validators class will have all these inbuilt validators. Now I have added the validators dot required to our name field. Now you can see that whenever the form is loaded initially, the status of that is invalid because this is a required field and we have not entered any data. Similarly, in the status component, what I have done is within each control, there will be a key called errors. So I am displaying the error message, which will be available within this errors key. So here you can see that the required error is true. Now, when we type some value immediately the error is gone and the form turns back to valid and when the form is invalid you can see that the submit button is disabled now let's try some more validations so here in the age as well let's add some validations here again the second parameter that is the synchronous validators again 
is a array we can pass multiple validators so here i am passing validators dot max as 100 comma validation validators dot min as 0 so now in this case i enter any negative value you can see that it will throw a message like the minimum is 0 but what you have entered is minus 1 similarly in case i give a value higher than 100 it will throw an error similarly let's add validation for our email as well again i am giving it as required and it should be an email so now it is by default invalid until we enter a valid email address so these are the way in which we will be able to add default validations to our controls so now in the case of this age field you can see that even though i added a maximum and minimum validation still even when i do not enter a value or in case i add a alphanumeric value still it is not showing as invalid now let's see how we can create a custom validator for this so custom validator by which i mean a custom synchronous validator so here i have created a synchronous validator called numeric validator.ts so this is the format we need to create a function which will return another function and that inner function accepts a control that is an abstract control uh, which can either be a form control form group or a form array and it should return a validation errors or null so in case there are no error it will be null in case there is an error it should be a validation error object so it's basically a key value pair so in our scenario what i am doing is i am getting the control i am checking the value in case it is not numeric what i am doing is i am returning an error object that is a validation errors and the error key is not numeric and the body i am giving the value in case there are no errors i am returning a null now what we can do is we can just add this validator within our validation list so here we need to call the function that's the key thing to note now once we go back here you can see that immediately an error is thrown like not numeric and the initial value as well so unless we enter a proper number it will be throwing a valid error so there can be scenarios in which the a particular validation might require the value from more than one field so let's take in our scenario i need to check the age as well as the state so by combining these two values i need to perform a validation so as you can see that since it involves two controls we will not be able to tie up that particular validation at a control level so we need to create this validation at a form level that is the form group level so now let's see how we can do that so the creation of the validator is pretty much similar we need to create a uh, validator function which we saw earlier which accepts a control and returns a validation error or null the key difference is that since we apply this particular validator at the form group level we will be able to access multiple controls within that form group so here in our case we can access both the age as well as the address dot state values so we access both these values and then check for the age restriction which is applicable to that particular state so in case that restriction is not met we throw an error or in case it is met we return null now the key difference is that when we go to our form group we need to add this validation at the form group main level itself so how we can do is that in the form builder dot group uh, we can pass a second parameter called validators and within that we can pass the validator name 
So once we do that, if we set the value, you can see that now there are no errors, that is no validity errors at any of the control level, but still the validity of the form is invalid. So you can see that the particular error message is also being shown here. That is the location age and the age is 10 and the location that's the state is Kerala. So once we modify it to 18, you can see that that particular error message is gone and the form is valid. Now in the previous example, we had seen that when a form level error is thrown, we are able to see an error object. Now let's see how we can access this error object within our program. So here you can see that the error name is location age and we are passing some data back to our component. So here what I have done is instead of disabling the submit button, what I am going to do is within the submit but submit form action, I am checking whether the form is valid. In case the form is valid, I will do the processing. Otherwise what I am doing is I am checking whether this particular form has the error location age that is the name of the cross control validation in case that error is there i want to display an alert so in order to check whether a particular error is there we can make use of the has error method and we can pass the name of the error so by passing the name of the error we will be able to see whether that particular error is there in case that error is there we will be able to get the details of that error by making use of the get error method. So here what I am doing is I am first checking it. In case it is there, I am getting the error details and I am displaying a message. So inside the error message, I have the age and location. So I am getting the age and displaying it within the error message. Now let's try to submit. You can see that an alert has been displayed along with the age which we have entered within our form. Now let's take a look at another kind of validator that is the asynchronous validators. So asynchronous validators are similar to the synchronous validators but only thing is that they might need to make a call to an API or something to in order to do a particular validation. So in our scenario what I am doing is I am mocking a delay that is the result of an asynchronous validator should be either a promise or an observable. So in our case, I am basically returning a new promise and I am making use of a set timeout of two seconds. Within that, I am checking whether if the city. So this particular validator I am uh, planning to add to a city control. So in case the city value is not matching with these two, I am returning an error that is an invalid city and in case it matches I will resolve it as null. So the difference between the sync and async validators is that this is actually an injectable and you need to implement the async validator interface which will have the validate method. So it will accept a control and as a return it will be either a promise or it will be an observable. So in case it is an observable we need to complete that observable before returning it back to the component. So here, since it is a promise, that's fine. I have uh, added the logic here. Now let's go to our form component. And since it is an injectable, we need to inject it as a service here. So city validator I have added here. Now let's go to our city. And here, based on the position, the async validators will be coming as the third parameter but since we do not have a synchronous validators here what I have done is there is another format in which you can pass the async validators or even the sync validators that is by passing it as an object and here you can use the key async validators and within that you can pass a list I have given the city validator dot validate and I am binding the city validator so that the scope will be kept. Once I have added the async validator, let's run the application and see. 
so initially I am setting the value so immediately you can see that the status of that city control that is where we added the sync validator it changed to pending now this will keep on happening either uh, during user interaction or during setting the value from the program now let's type something within our city field now you can see that on each key press the status of the control changes to pending so in effect there is an API call or an asynchronous operation happening on each key press. So this is not a performance solution. Now let's see how we can optimize this by reducing the API calls. Now we saw that the asynchronous validation was happening on each key press or each change of a value. So each control that subtract control has a key called update on. So here I am displaying the update on for the personal form that is our main form as well as the city field. Now when we go to our console you can see that both these are by default change. So ideally this is by default change for all the controls throughout our reactive forms. But in case we need to modify this. So in our case since we are making use of an asynchronous validator for the city here what we can do is there are two other options either it can be blur so what happens is that now if we go you can see that city update on has been changed to blur now when we set the value whenever we set the value programmatically it will run the synchronous validators but when we try to edit the value from the user you can see that the status is not changing but when we do a tab out or a blur that particular validation is done so this is one way another way is that you can update or you can optimize it further by making use of the submit option so in this scenario what happens is that only when we press the submit button or when we submit the form the validation will be run so here i am going to set the value now it runs because it is set programmatically but after that I am entering something and even on tab out or the blur event still it is not running the validation but when I submit now you can see that it actually ran the validation and the error is getting thrown so here in our examples we had set the validations initially in the code itself so there can be scenarios in which we might need to modify the validators which are attached to a particular control. Let's see how we can do that. So here I have added a button called modify validators. And to that particular button I have bound the method change validators. So here there are a few methods which can be used to modify the validators attached to a particular control. So first let's try the clear validators so clear validators basically what it does is it will clear all the validators which are attached to this particular control so first we are trying to remove the cross control validator now here initially it is invalid now let's set the value now the actual error is happening at the form level now let's try to remove this validator but you can see that even when we click the button the actual error is not getting changed so what happens is that whenever we try to dynamically that is during runtime when we try to modify the validators list we need to call the update value and validity method so unless we call this the effects won't be reflected so now you can see that the error is there I am going to press the modify validators. Now you can see that immediately the validation has been removed and our status has been changed to valid. Similarly, we have a corresponding clear for the async validators as well. So here within our address city, let's set a value. Now currently it is invalid 
Now I am going to clear the async validators related to city. Now you can see that the async validators has been removed. Now let's see another option. That is the set validator. So set validator basically means that whatever validators we pass to this set validators, it will be set as the only validators available for that particular control. So in our case for the age control, we have defined three validators. That is a custom validator and min and max. Here what we are doing is we are overriding this with only the required validator. Now, when we initially load the application, you can see that the not numeric value, that is the error, custom validator is run. Now, when I try to modify the validator, you can see that the required field alone is there. Now, when I try to enter any alpha numeric char alphabetic character, you can see that all the other validations have been removed. So, while using set validator, you should always take care that only that particular validation will be available. Now, let's see another scenario where we can make use of the add validators. So, the difference between set and add is that the validators which you pass in add validators will be added to the existing list of validators. So, here there is another utility method called has validator. So in our scenario for the zip code actually I'm checking whether that particular validator that is the required validation is present. In case it is not present I am adding that validator to this particular control. Then I call the update value and validity and after two seconds I am removing that particular validation using the remove validators. So while calling the remove validators, you need to pass the exact same instance of the particular validation which we passed in the add validator. So here I have added the code. Now initially within our zip code there is no validation. Now when I click on the modify validator, you can see that the validation was added and after two seconds it was automatically removed. Similar to the reactive way in which we will be able to watch for value changes, there is an option to listen for the status changes as well. So we have a observable key called status changes to which we can subscribe in order to listen for any status change for that particular abstract control. So once we have added this, let us check the console. So initially I am setting the value. Now you can see that the value change is getting triggered as well as the status change also. We are able to see it here. Now since the status of the form, the main form is invalid, it is getting displayed here. Now in case I change it to 18, now the value is changed as well as the status also we are able to see that it got changed. Now we have another way in which we can control the emission of this particular status when we try to update the value. So there is an option called emit event false. So let's see the default behavior. Now when we try to reset, you can see that the status was initially changed to pending because the async operator, the async validator ran and after that it became invalid. Now let's add the emit event false. Now I am setting the value. In this scenario the status change was emitted. Now when I try to reset you can see that both the events were actually not emitted. So in this way, in case you need to avoid the emitting the value change or the status change, you can pass this particular option that is the emit event as false. So this option is available in many other methods as well, similar to the only self flag. Hope you were able to get a clear understanding about reactive form. 
the advantages of using reactive forms, the various way in which you can observe the value, the status of the forms, as well as adding validation, including both the synchronous as well as asynchronous validations. See you soon. Thank you.